Welcome back to Face the Nation. It's time now for some political analysis. Ramesh Panuro is senior editor at National Review and a columnist for Bloomberg Opinion. Susan Page is the Washington bureau chief of USA Today. Jamal Simmons is a host on Hill TV and a Democratic strategist. And Jan Crawford is our CBS News chief legal correspondent. And Jan, you had the interview of the week with the attorney general uh, and his first reaction after Robert Mueller spoke publicly about the report. I think a question a lot of Americans have is, how did this go on for two years and the attorney general and the special counsel had two very different ideas of what could be accomplished in this investigation? Oh, well, you're talking about why the special counsel said, I can't make a conclusion yes. on whether or not the president obstructed justice because of this existing Office of Legal Counsel opinion about indicting sitting presidents. And I think um, it's interesting because when the special counsel met with the attorney general and his team on March 5th, uh, they were told at that point that he was not going to reach a conclusion on whether or not the president obstructed justice. They weren't even going to get into that analysis. Um, and I was told by other sources in the department that there was some confusion uh, on the behalf of the attorney general and his team about why. Uh, they didn't really understand some of the reasoning that they were hearing from the special counsel at that point about why he wasn't going to make a decision on obstruction. Uh, the report was not finished at that point. They were still working on it. So they just decided to, to wait and see what the report said. Uh, and then when they got the report uh, with, with no conclusion in there, they decided they would look at the law, uh, analyze the facts in the law, and make the decision themselves. But there was a lot in that report that surprised them, or rather, I should say, that was not in the report. They also expected the special counsel to go through and identify uh, the confidential grand jury information mm -hmm. so that they could quickly release a version of the report to the public. And they had been told that that was being done over a period of weeks. And so when they got the report, that was also a surprise that that information had not been identified, which would have meant the, that a four-page summary that was released later on would have been unnecessary by the attorney general. Up to this point, though, the one thing that seems agreed upon on both sides of the aisle has been, with the exception of the president, that Robert Mueller was extremely well qualified to carry all of this out. Why now, at this point, is the case essentially being made that he had unfinished business or that some of the technicalities of what you just laid out are calling some of this into question. Well, there, I think there's some disappointment. Uh, you know, people were looking for Robert Mueller, this man, like you said, who was highly regarded, a man of integrity, uh, to come in and say, here's the answers, here's what we need to do, American people, and let's just either resolve it or move on. And then when this kind of seemed to be unresolved on whether or not uh, the president obstructed justice, it, it was unsatisfactory uh, to a lot of people, especially when you think about the time and money that was spent on this investigation. Now, some people have said and asked why, uh, when the attorney general got this report, why didn't he send it back right. and say, you didn't finish the job? And I think, I mean, I think we can all understand what that might have looked like. It surely would have leaked uh, that the attorney general wasn't happy with the special counsel's report, told him to rethink it. Uh, so the Justice Department and the team really decided we're just going to stay out of it. This is Robert Mueller's work. This is his uh, decision and his conclusions. And now we're going to take it from there. Jamal, uh, James Comey, the former FBI director, uh, tweeted about this interview that Jan conducted, that Bill Barr offers no facts, and AG should not be echoing conspiracy theories. He should gather facts and show them this is what justice is about. Uh, this seems to push back specifically on this implication that he was misguided and sure. other investigators were. Are we at the point of conspiracy theories? I mean, is this a legitimate criticism? It does feel like we're at the point of conspiracy theory, but remember, the AG came out on the very first day and used words like collusion which uh, Robert Mueller said in the very beginning of his report, he did not investigate collusion because it wasn't a legal term. He investigated criminal conspiracies. Um, so there is some question about what really the AG is up to and who it is he is defending here. Is he looking out for the American people or looking out for the president? The reality is Mueller laid out a case. He listed at least, well, 10 instances of possible obstruction of justice, including the most salient of which, which appears to be the time the president ordered the White House counsel to go and fire the special counsel and then asked him to come up with a fake document to prove that he did not order him to go fire the special counsel. The Republicans are talking about process here to keep from having to talk about the substance of the report. Ramesh, how do you respond to that? Both of our major political parties in 2016 ran presidential candidates 
under FBI investigation. And that is going to create strain on the system, and we are seeing that strain continue to play out. I think that Attorney General Barr is quite right, as he said in uh, Jan's interview, that it is a big deal when a presidential campaign is put under surveillance, and it is perfectly reasonable to ask questions about whether, as he puts it, it was adequately predicated. You'll notice that Virginia Democratic Senator Mark Warner, earlier on the show, although he was quite critical of Barr, said, have at it with respect to that investigation. Go find those facts. And I think that that's a reasonable position to take. Yeah, but, but, you know, you certainly get the impression that uh, Barr was speaking as the president's lawyer, not as the country's lawyer. Uh, he adopted even some of the most controversial things that the president said, including suggesting that there were nefarious reasons for this investigation to be launched at the, at the beginning. And you almost got Joe Manchin, one of the few Democrats who voted for William Barr, to say he regretted that vote. He didn't quite go there, but it said it gave him pause. He clearly had concerns about the point of view that the attorney general adopted in talking about this very important issue. And, I mean, Jan, when, uh, in that particular line, antithetical to our democracy, the attorney general did not present to you any evidence to back that up. It's, it's a hunch? I, uh, he, I tried. I, 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 mean, I, I know you appealing, did. You did he an said he wasn't going to go there. Job. He said he has seen things that, that he believes merit investigation, whether it's the timeline and how this investigation was launched and what was done at a certain time or whether it was things afterward and meetings that occurred in Trump Tower after the election, uh, but he wouldn't confirm or deny any of that. Uh, he did make the point, though, and, and I think this is important to keep in mind, he, his, he started his career in the CIA in the 1970s, and that was in the wake of tremendous abuses by our intelligence agencies, investigations into civil rights organizations and American citizens. So his point to me over and over was that we have to look at these uh, investigations into an unprecedented, an unprecedented investigation into a presidential campaign to see if abuses occurred. What is wrong with that? So he's saying, I'm taking this is, mm -hmm. again, his words, you know, I'm looking into this now to make sure that it was followed properly, that rules and procedures were followed. Uh, and if not, why not? And so, again, to your point, Ramesh, that, that is very much what he said throughout the interview, that we're taking a look at this in the facts. Maybe it was legitimate. And he said that in the interview, too. Mm -hmm. that maybe it was legitimate. Maybe they had to handle it with this very small group of right. high-ranking officials at headquarters instead of the normal practice. And maybe there was a reason for that. Although it's interesting, as he is saying here, that he wants to look into whether or not they were spying. But he did make a determination of no obstruction of justice without looking at any of the underlying evidence, only reading the report. That's At least that's what he told the Senate committee that asked him. Which is its own fight right now on the Hill. But Ramesh, uh, I want to ask you, because you wrote about basically that it might be a miscalculation by the Speaker of the House not to move forward with impeachment proceedings, which that pressure was added to this week with Mueller's comments. That's right. You know, that's, it's an interesting thing that even though Mueller didn't actually tell us anything that he hadn't already told us in the report, it did seem to add fuel to the calls for impeachment on the Democratic side. I think Nancy Pelosi has made a judgment. There's a presidential race coming up. We're not going to get impeachment acted on by the Senate because Republicans control it. And he requires a two-thirds vote to remove the president. But I do wonder whether you can run a campaign which is, as, as Pelosi herself said yesterday, we're going to expose the corruption of this president, the wrongdoing of this president. If you say he's a wrongdoer, you say he's corrupt, can you not follow that up by impeachment? Doesn't it really undercut your message if you're not willing to follow through? But if it ultimately fails, and the speaker, Susan, said this has to be ironclad, what is the purpose? Yeah, well, that's the debate that she's having with Democrats. You know, her problem is we now have more than 50 House Democrats supporting the beginning of an impeachment inquiry, so that number continues to rise. But none of those uh, members are among the 41 House Democrats who flipped Republican seats in 2018 and gave the majority to the Democratic Party in the House of Representatives. And that is, that is a dilemma, because the lack of overlap between the Democratic base being eager for impeachment and swing voters, some of them Democrats, some of them independents, who are opposed to impeachment or who really want Democrats to focus on issues that affect them in their own lives, that is the conundrum that Nancy Pelosi faces. Jamal, oh, yeah. what, what did <laughs> some of us were watching? I'm chomping at the bit on this one. <laughs> I, I, I'm sure you are, but I do want to get your feedback yeah. on what you saw from some of the Democratic candidates this weekend out in California. Uh, so we saw the candidates out in California, I think, um, 
really speak up and say that they were ready for impeachment. This has been a growing thing. Elizabeth Warren and Julian Castro were among the first to say they were for it, and now it seems to be a fire that's making its way it's through the entire... an easy thing entire... to say, though. Sure it is, because uh, the Democratic electorate wants it. And you asked the question about what does it prove. You know, Elijah Cummings on this air a few weeks ago said, this is their watch. Uh, it's up to them, and history will be looking back at the, the both the House and the Republicans in the Senate. And it is not the Democrats' job to absolve the Republicans from their constitutional responsibility. It's the Democrats' job to live up to their constitutional responsibility so if they happen? find wrongdoing. Wrongdoing. Does this happen? Um, what does what happen? Impeachment? Mm -hmm. uh, I would bet that there will be some effort to hold the president accountable. What it looks like in the end, maybe a censure, maybe impeachment, I don't think he gets off scot-free. All right. Uh, well... Plenty more to talk about, but we have to leave it there. Uh, thank you, Jan. Congrats on the interview.